Hi, I'm Marie Heil. Welcome to Cooking with Marie. Today, this show is about meat. And the reason I decided to do a show about meat is because I get so many emails and uh, comments from friends of mine, women my age, who are very intimidated by cooking red meat. So, and other kinds of meat, chicken even, and fish. So, I decided to we're kind of have kind of a series of just meat shows where the focus is on different cuts and kinds of meat. So, and we're going to start with an easy one today, which is flank steak. But we're going to go through and make all different kinds of meat so you can really learn and not be intimidated. Realize that meat is not intimidating. It's actually really easy to cook, and it's great for dinner parties. Um, it's got lots of vitamins in it, and you can, of course, buy cuts of meat that are, you know, almost as low fat or as low in fat as chicken or pork or some of those other, the, the white meats. So, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is I have a nice big pan here because a flank steak is a long cut of meat. It actually comes from about on the cow about this area. It's right between the ribs and the hip. So the flank steak comes right here. It's um, what you need to marinate it and that's what we're going to do here today in order to make sure it's nice and tender. If you didn't, it's a heavily used area of the body and um, on the cow and so it would be um, a little bit tough. So we want to make sure we marinate it, but we'll do that today. And you don't need to marinate it too long, so it's not, not hard at all. Like I said, this is about a one and a half pound uh, flank steak. You can buy flank steaks that are a lot bigger. Uh, you could buy, one time we had a party and I bought, I think, three or four flank steaks and, and cooked them all and we sliced them up and served them and they were, they were really, really delicious. So you've got so many uh, varieties and options to use this flank steak. Which, and I'll, as I'm going through, I'll explain some of the different ways that you can serve it and even as leftovers, which is great. Say you don't finish it the night before, you've got lunch tomorrow, which is I know everybody loves. So this is just straight from the butcher, and you want it to be a beautiful red color. So make sure your meat is nice and fresh, as this is. We've got this lovely red color. And whenever you're working with raw meat, you want to make sure you wash your hands um, plenty which I will do in a minute, and roll this out. You can see it's a nice long cut of meat, and this one is um, probably even shorter than some. But um, I want you to see these close-ups here on the bottom of this meat, because you can see how the grains go. Right now, the way I'm holding it, they're going uh, horizontally, so they're going down. And the reason this is important is because when we cut the meat, um, if we cut it this way with the grain, it would be very tough. So when people say cut against the grain, that means you're going perpendicular to these lines, which is what we're going to do. We're going to cut this way once we after, after we cook it. So I just want you to be aware when I say against the grain, it's perpendicular to these horizontal lines. So I just wanted to make sure you see a close-up of um, these grains here. So we have that. I'm just going to place that in this nice dish here for to start the marinade. And I'll give my hands a quick wash before we start that. Let's get started. Now, you can marinate this in all sorts of things, whether it's pineapple or papaya juice or ginger or some kind of, you know, other citrus or um, something that's very common is uh, red wine. And that's what we're going to use today. And that will actually tenderize it very well. Vinegar also tenderizes it. And for a little bit of salty and flavor, we're going to use some soy sauce. If you want it a little bit sweeter, you could use teriyaki. I often use that in, when I, in, my, in this particular marinade. So um, I've got a measuring cup here. Now, you certainly don't have to measure, and I frankly generally don't. But just for the sake of the cooking show, I'm going to measure, and I'm going to put about a little less than a quarter, actually I'll go about a quarter cup of soy sauce. If I was using soy and teriyaki, I would split it up. I'd use, so an eighth a cup of soy, set, soy sauce and an eighth a cup of teriyaki sauce. And you can just find those at your regular grocery market. Um, 
Now soy sauce does have a lot of salt or sodium in it, so if you want to buy the low sodium soy sauce, you can do that if you're trying to watch your salt. But uh, above all, you don't need to add any more salt to this marinade because we've got plenty here. Now we're going to add some red wine. I'll add about a half a cup of that, so to a quarter, that would be three quarters cup. And we may need a little more, we'll see. But just any kind of red wine, you know, they always say if you would if you wouldn't drink it, don't cook with it. But, you know, just some basic red wine is great. Next thing we're going to add is a little bit of olive oil in there. There we go. And again, it doesn't have to be really measured. We've got about a quarter cup uh, just to keep it nice and moist. And then some black pepper. And we'll again do that on top. So there's our marinade. And we'll go ahead and just, actually I'll give it a quick stir. Sounds like a good idea. There we go. And then just kind of pour that right over the meat. Make sure it's all covered. Ooh, that looks good. Now flank steak doesn't have to marinate for very long. So, and it cooks very quickly as you'll see. So, plan to marinate for about a half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. Um, and then the cook time will be about six minutes per side, depending on how well done or rare you want it. So um, that's, you know, 20 to 30 minutes for marinating and then about 12 to 15 minutes for cooking. So it's, it's really um, very short. But the great thing about marinating is you can, you can marinate while you're doing something else, which is what we, exactly what we're going to do. The last thing I'm going to add to this marinade is some fresh garlic. So I'm going to grab my cutting board here and we're just going to use it's, um, garlic is always your preference. Some people love a lot of garlic. Um, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle, so I use about three cloves. And a clove is this, remember. remember. <laughs> the whole thing that I just had is what people call a head of garlic or a bulb of garlic. But we're going to be using cloves. I love my, my favorite story my friend once told me is that she um, mistook a head of garlic for a clove of garlic. And so instead of using um, three cloves, they used three heads of garlic for these burritos they were making. And you can imagine um, it was a little overwhelming. <laughs> so uh, we'll just do this garlic, just mince it up. Doesn't, doesn't need to be uh, anything perfect. Again, it's just for the marinade. So we'll just chop that end off and then just mince that up real nicely. And a little secret about garlic is that it, it off, it's often one of those things that when you cook with it, it really stays with you. It stays um, on your fingers and sometimes even for days I can still smell it on my fingers. But my dad taught me a trick that if you rub your fingers on an aluminum uh, or a stainless steel surface, like a kitchen sink, it takes the garlic smell away. So just remember that if you get garlic hands. So chop that up. 